Coast Road Gang, Coast Road Gang, where you at fam? We are back here today and this is episode 5 of the Minecraft Let's Play Project Dreamer. As you can see we've been building, we've been building on the base, we got our furnace here, we got a tree grove here, we got to build a better tree farm later on. I started building, uh, I mean I tried building a farm and I mean the wheat farm is going pretty good we got ourselves a few carrots also growing in there we need to harvest a bunch of carrots so that later on when we build our pig farm we'll have enough carrots to breed them up to have enough wheat for all the sheep and cows that we're gonna breed up and so on this episode our main goal is to make a sheep pen yeah guys I know most people go for the cows but this time we're gonna go for the sheep Cows, you know, cows are great guys. They do give us a lot of good resources that we need early game. But I think we're pretty stocked with leather. We have just enough leather for those bookshelves which I'll be making later to add to our enchantment table. As you can see here, this is the previous attempt at the sheep pen that we had made earlier this game. But now I think it's time for a bigger one. And there's a sheep captured right inside that, that pillar of dirt that you see. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let you out there little sheep. What have they done to you? How have they been treating you? They just captured you here in this pillar of dirt. So let's get on with the build. So I'll leave you here with a few tips that I use. I'm not sure that it's the best way to do it but it's the way I do it. So what I do is I start off with some you know placement blocks. I just add a few blocks at the corners of each of the build. Each of the parts of the build. Like I'll add a bunch of cobble or I'll add a bunch of you know wooden blocks just so that I know where the corners are. Then from there I go on to build the walls and do any landscaping if required at the edges of the house. As you can see we're in a really weird spot. We're like at the edge of a hill, a small little hill. So I'm planning to make like a retaining wall over here out of cobblestone at the back so that it looks like it's held up by the wall. A stone or cobblestone wall and the dirt is you know he held up if you've seen farms it helps to prevent erosion so now that we're done with the border of the structure we can start building the in inside of the building so that's how I like to do it and here's a tip for you all it helps when you're building to you know map out the outside of the structure using a border it, it doesn't have to be permanent you can just keep it as placeholder blocks and then you know as you start building the more you start building over it you start feeling like okay this needs to change or that needs to change so these blocks right now that I have they're just the border guys they just give me an idea a rough idea of how the build is supposed to look and then I'll start removing blocks, adding blocks in place of that as I go on. I'm not the best builder out there. There are definitely tons of awesome YouTubers that build way better than me. But you know, and I have a few other mods installed like Quark. And they help add some de depth into the build. So they really help guys. And there's a lot of, you know, uh, color options in Quark. You can literally make stained plank wood. That's like, you don't have to go to get Acacia for orange uh, planks you know you can just get orange stained wood and then that's it orange stained planks like you just need some orange dye or some red dye to build a white dye or any color and dyes are pretty easy to find so you need like eight planks and then one dye and then you can make any color of wood type you like so that's a real help quark is one of the most awesome mods i've ever played with guys there are a few mods that i'll be installing Oh, I have already installed on the server and my friends and I we have it installed on our client as well those mods they help to reduce you know like I said before they help to reduce the grindiness of Minecraft and we'll be using those mods as we play once we get to them and I'll show you how to use those mods so this will be kind of a tutorial on how to use those mods as well as how we can play survival minecraft it's a mix of both guys and this is the kind of style i like to play and i hope you enjoy watching this 
so as you could see i was really struggling with that roof guys man i really suck at building slope roofs but look at it it's finally done i literally had to go look up a tutorial in between filming this just to know how to build those slope roofs guys it's such a pain but now i think i got it down and i think more slope roofs i'll be trying to be building over the course of time So now that we got the frame of the roof built up, it'll be pretty easy to add those slabs for the rest of the roof. Now I'll be showing you a little tip that I've picked up over my time in uh, playing Minecraft from other YouTubers, you know. So it's to make these supports, like you can make these supports, you can decorate it all sorts of ways. It just adds more depth to the structure. You can use walls, you can use uh, posts, fence posts, you can use blocks, or you can go really crazy with this kind of stuff. But since I'm making a kind of rustic, you know, medieval sort of build, uh, a wooden build, with I tend to use a lot of greys and browns mostly, but I'll be trying to explore other colors, like going crazy with this kind of stuff. Uh, for now, I'm just going to stick to fence posts and a bunch of cobble for this build, but I'll try to be making the sheep pen a little more fancy later on, like as we go on. Okay, so we are done with the roof, like the roof is totally in place and I'm here at the back of the pen. I'm just adding some a bunch of structures, some depth to it. I don't want to use regular old blocks because you know again then it'll be looking like a bit squarish and it'll look overall really ugly guys. You want to mix up as many blocks as you can in your build. Uh, try to use com colors that complement each other like wood and grey go great together and to be honest that's the only one i know that actually goes great together i want to do a lot of more experimental color combinations in this build guys because this this map has so many awesome structures like stuff that will inspire you stuff is created by so many different people the building team in this map is so amazing i mean huge structures guys the structures that i'm building here in survival is like tiny compared to whatever the structures are out there we will be exploring the map next episode i'll be showing you around the place i'll be showing you the random stuff that you just find sprinkled around the place obviously those aren't generated by the world this map is pre-made by the developers of the map but those structures get really crazy like huge i believe there's this wall it looks like the wall from game of thrones and uh maybe we'll be reaching that village i don't know when we're going to reach it because i haven't played beyond a certain point i've only explored like around 10 5 percent of this map maybe it's 12 kilometers wide and 12 kilometers long so you can imagine how much content is packed into this map and i tell you if you explore if you walk around the map for 10 15 minutes you'll be finding so many things like you won't believe this you're playing minecraft this is like you're playing something or the elder scrolls or something you just there's so much to discover this is why i want to do a playthrough on this map because as i go along i'll be surprised 
of course i'm doing a voice over so by the time i'm recording this you already i've already been there but i'll try to act surprised guys but some sceneries are seriously breathtaking especially with the shaders i'm using that's bsl shaders So you can see here, I'm taking out a few of those wooden supports because they were looking a bit, you know, square in the environment. And I added these um, stone walls in between, just below the fence gates, fence posts, and fence gates in between them. Now they look way more better, and they just, you know, add to the vibe of the structure overall. Even though they don't perform any function like the fence gates are just there for decoration but they make the structure look way better so you can incorporate such a decorations into your build And as you can see here guys, I have replaced the entire front fence with a stone wall because I think it looks a little better with its stone accenting the rest of the wood and wooden post, fence posts on top of it. I'll be adding here some leaves in front of it to give it a bit more decorative vibe. So inside the pen here, I'm right clicking with my shovel on the grass blocks. It looks like the sheep has eaten the grass and taken a bite out of the grass. It like leaves some dirt, blank dirt space over there. You can alternately use coarse dirt for this, but you don't get that layer of depth. Anyway, you can also use a mixture of coarse dirt, gravel, make it look more like a worn path that the sheep have been eating. Even though there are hay blocks around and I will be adding a really special block from the mod quark later on I shall show you guys which auto is the sheep so this is just to give it like a you know animals have lived here a lived in look not that grass is blank grass is just growing around the place and I'm adding a bit of bone meal here so bone meal adds a whole ton of wild grass over here long tall grass and flowers I don't want that much of grass to be around the place I don't want it to look like it's a jungle or something so I bone meal, one bone meal is enough to add that much of grass. So all I do is bone meal a little bit, remove the excess grass and look, make it look like tiny sprouts of grass have been growing here with the flower. And it's now time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Yes, we got to get these sheep into the pen. So finally, we have the sheep pen filled up. We got to breed them and overpopulate them so that we have a lot of mutton and a lot of wool i will be making a wool auto shearing farm later on with these very sheep that we're gonna have bred up in there i know it's really sad they're all from alabama they're all brothers and sisters they're all gonna breed with each other but we need that mutton guys we're gonna go caving soon we need a whole lot of food and some proper protein some proper nourishment food to go down into the caves because you never know what we might find we might run into a creeper out of nowhere and we might get one shot and blown into smithereens by that creeper and did you guys notice i bet a lot of you really must be thinking i'm a new player in this because i haven't even got a set of diamond armor yet yes guys i need to do that remember early in the episode i was telling you about the auto feeder well quark mod adds this thing called a feeding trough the feeding trough lets you breed animals without physically giving the food to them. I mean manual breeding, you don't have to do that anymore. Because with Quark, you just have to follow the recipe on the screen and then bam, you get an auto feeder. So right now what you got to do is just place it where your sheep are, put some wheat in there and they will automatically start to breed. 
look they're making love right in front of us wow all that hey we don't have to go and put it in their mouth so guys that this is where i end the episode i hope this sheep farm looks good to you i really put a lot of time and effort into it and that's our house we're gonna go have a nice day guys bless you